Hello there. Welcome back to another episode of Anime with Alvin. Today, we're going to be attempting to make this giant pudding mountain from Toriko. Yep, seems like a pretty big one, so we are going to need a lot of eggs. 120, in fact. As you can see, the entire table is filled with eggs. Thank you to all the chickens out there. Keep doing your thing. Now that I have finished fooling around with these eggs, Let's get started. While doing a little bit of research, I found that there's actually a king pudding kit that comes from Japan. So naturally, we ordered it online and are going to play around with it. It seems like it comes with many things, one of them which includes an instruction manual. This one feels a little like a squishy pouch. I'm guessing that's probably the caramel sauce. And this other bag seems to be a powder of some sort. So we're gonna follow instructions, go over to the stove and heat an entire container of milk and dump in that powdery looking thing, which I'm guessing is a mixture of starch, gel gelatin and flavoring. For whatever reason, this turned a slight oddly pink on the top. Not sure if that's supposed to happen, but we only got one of these. When stirring and making sure that this has come to a boil and there are no lumps, this goes back into the plastic container, which slightly concerns me, but I'm guessing Japan knows what it's doing. After dumping all of the mixture in there, we're going to cover this and let it set at room temperature and then in the fridge until completely firm. Once this has cooled for a relatively long time, around six to eight hours, this is now going to get flipped and inverted onto a plate. Hey, would you look at that? That's that's pretty cool. Give it a jiggle, because by law, you must jiggle anything that seems to jiggle. And we're going to open up this packet and dump this caramel-like sauce right on top. And I have to say that it looks pretty good. A little small, but we're getting there. The texture is quite interesting. It's a very soft-like pudding, not like jello or anything like that. And the taste is relatively mild. The flavoring seems to be more on the milk side. It doesn't really taste like pudding or flan or creme brulee or anything like that. I'm guessing that's because there's a lack of eggs in here. So even though this was quite fun and a good little detour and warm-up, Let's get down to the real business. In a bowl, we are cracking and separating 120 large egg yolks. Don't worry about those egg whites, they did not go to waste as I took them home and cooked them and ate them for quite a long time. In another large container, we are combining two and one quarter cups of powdered gelatin with 1800 milliliters of water. Gonna give this a good stir and let this bloom to the side. Then we are going to measure out 425 ounces of whole milk. 3.6 liters of heavy cream and about a half cup of vanilla extract cleaned out with a little bit of extra cream. Into our egg yolks, we're going to add five pounds of sugar. Then these are going to get blended with an immersion blender with a whisk attachment. Otherwise, whisking this by hand may be a little too much for me. I'm gonna go to the stove and heat up 60% of this milk and just until it has started to simmer and slowly temper this one ladle at a time into our egg yolk mixture. Otherwise, it'll probably overcook the eggs. and We don't really want that because we only got one shot at this. Once all of the milk has been incorporated slowly, we're gonna dump in our giant solidified block of gelatin, whisking to dissolve. This mixture is now getting split between two pots because it is a lot and we're going to go back to the stove and heat this until the custard reaches about 160 degrees Fahrenheit. It's important while this happens we are stirring the mixture constantly to prevent any sort of clumps or burning on the bottom. This mixture now gets passed through a fine sieve back into our giant bowl and we are going to add in our cream with vanilla mixture just to cool this down a little bit more, plus a heavy handful of salt. Now that our custard is ready, we are going to slowly ladle this with a giant cup into a large container designed to hold liquids for large events. And because we made so much custard, I thought it would be fun to also make a few different other sizes, starting with a large pot for our medium size, going over to a ramekin for our small sized or creme brulee sized, and then making a tiny one just for fun. All this gets wrapped and put in the fridge for at least 24 hours, and then we will see what we have made. For our caramel, we're dumping in 840 grams of sugar with 180 grams of boiling water, just into a pan until it has become a nice amber color. Once it has reached that color, we're going to add in another 180 grams of water, and then we're going to stir that until that becomes a sauce. This gets strained and goes into a little container for later. First, we're going to invert and unmold our little dude. Guy is very small. He goes onto a plate, and just because he is very small, we are going to give him two little black sesame eyes. I will name you little Timmy. Timmy seems to be a little bit sad today. On his head, we are going to dump a little spoonful of caramel and uh, realize that the caramel is still hot, which is now melting Timmy's face. Delicious. Sorry, little buddy. Um, 
I think we should just probably eat you and put you out of your misery. Next up is our medium sized pudding made in a ramekin. We're going to invert this guy and just like Lil Timmy, we're going to again put two eyes on his face. We will name this guy Lil Jimmy. Jimmy seems to be even more sad than Timmy, a thought I did not know was possible. Again, we are going to give him a nice little caramel bath. Uh, the caramel is still hot. So again, once more, Lil Jimmy is now being completely melted. Let's go ahead and eat his eyes so that he does not have to see the rest of what is to come. Very delicious. Next up is the pudding made in our large stock pot. Let's go ahead and find a plate that can barely fit this entire thing. And we're going to take this slowly off. Oh, wow. That is beautiful. My God, what a specimen. We're going to name you Big Bobby. Let's go ahead and give Big Bobby a few jiggles. Let's go ahead and give him another few jiggles and make sure that we record in slow motion on my phone for later viewing. I have now learned from my previous mistakes and will not personify this guy with two more eyes. So instead, we're going to skip ahead straight to the caramel, which is also cooled by now, and give this guy a nice little head bath. The texture seems to be maintaining its consistency across the sizes so far. This one has more of a softer inside, which is to be expected. And because Big Bobby does not have eyes, it is perfectly okay to split him in half with a knife for scientific purposes. We're also not going to waste any of this food, so we're placing Big Bobby in a body bag for later to take home that in, in separate, separate, separate pieces so we don't get found out. At long last, we are going to unveil our piece de resistance. Here I am clearly struggling to figure out how to invert this, so we have called in the help of Steve, a very strong man who usually is behind the camera. We're still trying to figure this out. Not sure how to hopefully not shatter the table. And here a one. A two, a three. Woohoo! Now that, that is cinema. Heck yeah. Give this guy a few slaps as uh, it is clear that this is not coming out so easily. Those little uh, bubbles you were seeing, th those are air pockets escaping because we have created a vacuum from how rotund and voluptuous this pudding is. It is slowly shooting itself out one bubble at a time. I wish you could hear the sounds right now because they are quite hilarious. Uh, Almost there, almost there, just got it. Oh, there it is. I'm gonna name this after my favorite poet, Donkey. This is a giant pudding mountain, and yeah, everything seems to be going great. I love how this looks. Everything is amazing, and I'm so happy that we got to, do oh, okay, Donkey's falling over in the back a little bit. Let's just, let's get them back to, oh, oh, oh God. What, what is happening over here? <laughs> <laughs> Donkey has completely split down the middle. Oh god. Uh okay. This is our giant pudding mountain and we are still going to eat it because we respect food and will not waste the food that we have made. So we're going to pour on the rest of our delicious syrup and dive right in. Delicious. This is actually very good and the flavor is just like pudding. In the spirit of not wasting this, I was taught a trick by an old pastry chef where if you take pudding and you blend it in a food processor, you kind of remake a whole pudding sauce, thick cream kind of situation. I volunteer to take all of these home, so I'm going to go figure out what kind of dessert I can make with all of this. 